Hi, everybody. Stephen Mead here with Domicile Real Estate, where we are on a mission to help California's renters become homeowners. This is our first time homebuyer market update for August 27th. Uh, we are glad to have you with us. Um, you know, California, a lot of schools go, uh, go back uh, in session towards the end of August. Uh, we're definitely seeing that. I think this is one of the first full weeks of kids back in school for many school districts in Los Angeles and Orange counties. And the numbers show something pretty interesting. Uh, one thing that I love is, you know, I keep in a lot of contact with colleagues that, that work in the same area. And what I always try and do is I'm curious to see how well their anecdotal information tends to match up with our quantitative and numerical data. And uh, a, an agent of mine uh, or an agent friend of mine just posted on a home in Long Beach that he had 43 offers. We really haven't seen that kind of activity for a few months. So I was a bit surprised by that. And then the stats, uh, we ran them this week and guess what? They're kind of pointing in the same direction. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what that means for you. So if we go back here to the beginning of our presentation, first off, let's look at our closed prices at the entry level end of the market. Again, this is looking backwards four to six weeks. We see an uptick on our entry level homes kind of at 737. So getting pretty close to that all time figure of 740. Uh, we're at a 497 here. You know, the condo market price wise still continues to lag behind. I really think if you're a first time home buyer and you're feeling like you're priced out and you're never gonna get anything, take a look at the condo market because I think you'll be surprised to see how it's really remained affordable in a way that entry-level single-family homes have not. And I don't think that that situation is going to exist indefinitely. And I've got a couple of reasons why. We'll get to that in a second. Just as a reminder, um, our entry-level home is a three-bedroom, two-bath in LA and Orange Counties. And our entry-level condo is a two-bedroom, two-bath in Los Angeles and Orange Counties. So getting on here to the cost um, you know, based on our hypothetical entry level home buyer with 5% down, including mortgage insurance, taxes, um, regular insurance, an HOA fee in the case of our entry level condo, we end up with $4,116 all in uh, for our entry level single family home and $3,044 all in for our condo. And I'm going to look back here for a second because I think this is an important point to make. You know, back in 2018, we were just under $3,600 for that um, entry level home. And today we're at 4116. So roughly, um, you know, roughly a 500 ish dollar difference, $520 difference there. Uh, between those two data points, really, that is less than a 15% uh, change. That's really not too bad. But look down here at our entry level condo. We were at $2,899. And now we're only at $3,044. That is really not much of an increase at all. Um, you know, relatively speaking, condos are a bargain. So just again, kind of putting some real reference point on this for your household income. If you had no other debts, what would you need to qualify? We have crested that magic $100,000 mark again for household income um, for our entry level single family home. And we are at right around 74,500 for our entry level condo. All the way back in 2018, we were at 71. I do think we have seen easily that $4,000 of wage growth. That is actually only about a 5% increase. Um, you know, really, or maybe a little bit more than 5%, 6% increase over the last three years. That is below inflation. So condos are, relatively speaking, cheaper than they were three years ago. Okay, now what you've all been waiting for, the number that kind of surprised everyone this week. You know, if, if you look at this trend, and I'm really a fan of tracking this to look at the trend line, what do we see? a market that got absolutely crazy and then slowly started to taper off here with ups and downs. And then look what happened the last couple of weeks. 92% for our entry level condo, that is firmly in crazy town territory of levels of competitiveness on our absorption rate. And 88% uh, 
for our entry level single family home that is kind of heading right back down to to crazy town um you know definitely a very competitive market if you look back here historically there have been some easier weeks to buy houses um but not this past week so you know we've talked in a couple of videos right about understanding that a lot of these things are relative and i i think i made the statement that it was a relatively good time for people who've been waiting on the sidelines obviously this past week was pretty competitive i'm very curious to see is this is this one of these blips one of these ridges um that tend to appear from time to time or are we heading towards a little bit of a new normal uh, i've got some other news that should tell you don't wait too long you know after basically um weeks of sort of rising inventory look what's happened on both both of our measurements for both entry level single family homes and our entry level condo inventory has dropped um for condos it was just last week for single families it's been the last um you know really the last two weeks that inventory has dropped um you know this is the lowest level of inventory we have had for our entry level single family homes uh, basically since around the 4th of July weekend. And I think that's really important. Still much better than it was in the spring. So, you know, you still are going to see a lot more choice out there in the marketplace, but this really is an interesting development. Um, you know, I'm going to go off screen share for a second. Somebody asked me, what is the seasonality of the Southern California real estate market? And, you know, unlike other parts of the country where as soon as the weather gets cold, the, the market just, or the snow falls, the market just kind of comes to a halt. Our market has been a little bit more complex than that. Historically in Southern California, we kind of have this late summer lull. Uh, some agents call it a vacation lull. Other agents call it the back to school lull. And as soon as we get through that kind of rough end of August, usually through September and October, things actually look pretty good, pretty busy of a market. And it looks like we're seeing a little bit of that again this year. So we jokingly say back to school, back to back to buying houses, but the reality is that that's kind of a true statement for our market. So let's jump back in here, you know, looking at these inventory numbers, like I said, you know, this isn't real bad news, but it, it's not the trend in the direction you're moving. Like this might be really sort of a bit of our inventory high point. This might be our new normal is that this is just how much we're going to see. And we're not going to jump up to this point over here. Now, if we're looking at our 14 days still active, that's kind of another interesting one, right? If you look at these graphs, we kind of bottomed, or the most competitive market really was occurring kind of in this March, early April timeframe. Then the market started getting less competitive, but kind of look what's happened here. We saw a little bit of a bounce on that entry level condo, um, but you know we kind of saw a little bit of a reversal of that trend the last few weeks on our entry level single family homes. Is it possible that the competition is lightened as it's going to be? You know, um, one of the things that I've talked about a lot with people is, is understanding some of the structural elements of our housing market. And, and, and at the most basic point, we have a shortage of housing. In the last 10 years, since the economic sort of crisis or disaster, we have not built housing as fast as households were being formed in California. So fundamentally, we started off a little bit behind and every year we've dropped back farther and farther. And you know, from my vantage point, I'm not seeing a lot of reasons to believe that there are factors that are going to change that anytime soon. In fact, there are a lot of pressures to not build housing right now. Um, from sort of legislative pressures to um, cities not wanting to grant permits without huge what's called development offset fees. Um, also to the wildfires, making us reassess the idea of putting homes in farther and farther out areas in the wilderness. I just don't see any of this changing within the next five years. And I, I think the consequence of that is going to be that we're going to be in a housing market that feels tight. Um, I just don't see us ending up with a a glut of housing, right? Where there's just this overflowing supply of housing and prices drop. Um, I'm just not seeing that happening anytime in the near future. So jumping back in here, you know, kind of our final graph is talking about this weak supply of homes. And I've really been taking a lot of chance to kind of look back um, 
and look back towards the fall of last year. Where were we a year ago today? Well, you know, we don't have that data quite yet, but looking back in September, we had just under four weeks of inventory of entry level single family homes. And we had about seven and a half weeks of entry level condos. Look at where we are today. Well, 3.65 weeks of entry level single family homes. That's actually not that far off from where we were last fall, which was a busy market also. But look at these condo numbers, 4.89 weeks of inventory versus 7.6 and change. What this tells me is I feel like these price increases on condos are coming. They're not here yet, but I think they are on their way and the check is in the mail for that. I think those prices will have to move upward as this inventory has dropped significantly. So if you were the kind of person who has thought, I'll just keep waiting because condos will always be cheap. They've relatively not risen as fast as single family homes. I don't know how much that era is going, how much longer that era is going to last. And just to kind of make a broader statement, I think people in the Southern California area, if you look at all of the new infill developments, and um, an infill development is one of those developments where it used to be, maybe it was industrial land, maybe it was commercial land. That land has been purchased by a developer. They've plowed under that commercial. They've gotten it rezoned to some type of residential. And if you look at the products that are being built, if it is under a million dollars in our entry level sphere, it is not a detached property. It is an attached type of a condo property. And I think entry-level buyers are just getting more and more used to the idea of starting with attached properties or condo or townhome properties. And I also think I'm hearing a lot of buyers, you know, it used to be that people, everybody told me, well, we'll start with a condo if we start with a condo if we have to, or we're going to move on to a single family home as soon as we're able to move up to that. I'm hearing people tell me that they're just kind of more condo townhome for life. And, and they're more accepting of that. And I think because of that attitude, we're seeing a delayed effect, but I do believe we're gonna see those condos, those condo prices start to rise up and start to reflect that sort of fundamental change in the way people are thinking. It hasn't happened yet. So, you know, if you're an entry level buyer, especially maybe if you're in a household size of one, right? So you're not in a dual income household, um, you know, I think a condo can be a compelling proposition. I think that notion of waiting until you can afford a single family home, I think, I think you may price yourself out of the market. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Really check out some of our other videos. If you're watching this on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have some videos that we don't post on Facebook. Um, we obviously love your questions and comments. Absolutely keep them coming. Uh, if you are a first time home buyer and you're really looking for an edge and a way to get ahead in a market like this, definitely reach out to us. You know, I'll say I don't think anybody is more knowledgeable and more insightful for home, first time home buyers and entry level home buyers than us. You can reach out to us via comments uh, or head to our website or anything else. Um, as always, happy Friday. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. All that stuff, send the videos to your friends, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we will talk to you real soon.